Wow, 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 wow. All right, good day and welcome to another episode of the Road FS Business 101 series with Prentice Sinclair, who's always making us laugh. That's right. <laughs> I'm Jody. And I'm Rod Pusey. And this is Prentice Sinclair, as you all know, from it's, detail. Uh, it's St. Clair. It's ST period. St. Clair. St. Clair. Is it I, actually a French? Is it French? For real? Uh, yes. I am I am 50% French. So if I go to a French museum, are you like saint eyes or whatever they call that? You know, a canonized saint in the museum? <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah, yeah. That's well, a, you know, you, you are the I'm, saint. Well, we should call you a, the training kid, saint. Yeah, when I was a kid, I remember this one kid came up to me. Is, is your dad like a pastor or something? <laughs> I didn't even, like, what are you talking about? <clears throat> the patron saint of, of shiny paint. Well, yeah, if sure. you wouldn't be like preaching all the time, how say be delivered <laughs> from your detailing woes? If you can put your hands on the screen. That's right. <laughs> Keep your hands off the car. <laughs> no leaning on the car. That's right. We just need, we just, whatever the spirit tells you, send it to me now. That's right. That's right. Well, but, what the Spirit's telling me now is that we are in for our fifth episode of the Business 101 series. And we're actually breaking today's topic up into two uh, series. So today we're going to be talking about marketing, attracting and retaining customers. So this is part one. So we're super excited. If you guys have not seen the other four episodes, please go back and watch them yes. because they are phenomenal. We're getting phenomenal feedback on them. So make sure to go out to the YouTube channel and subscribe so that you get notified of every single one. So yep. Prentice, let's talk marketing. Marketing. <clears throat> marketing is everything that you do to get customers to come to you. All right. So, uh, and there's a difference between marketing and sales. Marketing again is how you attract customers. And then sales is what you do to convert them into paying customers. And then the third part of the equation that's really, really important is um, keeping those customers, retaining customer retention. So, um, you know, I like to talk about an operational model of a detailing business, um, starting with customer requirements, going into procedures, going into a high quality service, going into a delighted customer at the end. And that's the flow chart. And it starts with a customer and it finishes with a customer. If you don't have customers, you're not surviving. You're not making money. So really important to get the customers. So how do you get the customers? Okay, so there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, there's traditional marketing, you know, print advertising, mailers, door hangers. Um, and then there's less traditional advertising, which would be more like... Uh, uh, business networking groups, um, you know, community events, um, you know, to, uh, uh, word of mouth is my favorite. Word of mouth uh, works great for a smaller operation, works really well. Um, for larger operations where you've got mouths to feed and bays to fill, you know, you're probably going to have to have a, an actual advertising budget and you're going to be spending a, a percentage of your income on attracting new customers um, to make sure that you can keep those bays filled at that high volume situation. Right. And one of the questions that I got um, when we first put out the agenda of all the stuff we we're going to have, I saw a bunch of posts about um, what is the best marketing? What is the most effective marketing? It's Here's whatever answer. works for you. Whatever, exactly. <laughs> whatever works in your market for you and brings in what really important, the amount of customers that you want for the size of your business. Right. And like you said, I'm glad you mentioned that right out front because there's a big difference if I've got a five bay shop and 12 employees versus I'm a one man or one woman shop Mobile that's doing detailer. one or two cars. Right. You yeah. don't want to have the marketing machine that's bringing you in a half a dozen cars a day because then you're just going to disappoint customers. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And also it's about the quality of the customer too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, when Groupon first came out, people were jumping on that and finding out that uh, they were flooded with low quality customers. 
And you had this uh, a Groupon shopper who would basically go from detailer to detailer <clears throat> with their Groupon coupons. And um, you found out that you never saw those people again. Um, you got a very small amount of money at the end of it and you couldn't keep up with them. So that's not a high quality customer. I want a customer that um, understands the value of my service, is willing to pay my price and doesn't question it and will come back and send their friends. That's the ideal customer. For yes, anybody, yeah, really. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So let, let's step back a little bit. And I think a lot of times we jump to the question, what's the best marketing right. when we don't even have the foundational elements of right. our marketing in place. And you hit, you said something at the very beginning about understanding who your customer is. So let's talk about building the foundational elements to build a nice marketing strategy. Wow. Um, that sounds way above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think you're giving me way too much credit. I mean, this is a right, big head, right. but it doesn't have everything in it. No, well, I, I think you, you can when, break you know, it. let's, let's say you, let's say you're a, a, a relatively small operation just starting out. And I think that's what most detailers are. Um, and you're just trying to figure out where do I find people? Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's where you want to, you know, figure out, um, like, well, first of all, it depends on what kind of service you want to provide. <clears throat> OK, do you want to do high end detailing? Do you want to do car washing? Uh, do you want to do only ceramic coatings? I mean, what is it that you want to do? Uh, I know that when I started, you know, I started as a lowly mobile detailer back in. Uh, I went full time in 94 and I took anybody that that I could get. And I was fortunate enough to have um, a number of customers that, that were already on, on uh, in my system about 80 of them because I had been doing detailing as a side business uh, for a number of years. So, you know, sending a letter out to those 80 people and saying, hey, I'm doing this for real. This is going to be full time. Yeah, uh, I know you love my work, so please send your friends um, uh, over to me and I, I'd love to do that. And then what I found is that out, being out and about mobile, um, people just see you working and they stop and say, hey, you know, can I get a business card? And that yep. was one of the one of the biggest ways I got new customers was was just being out there. And that's where that, um, you know, the big show comes in. That's a Steve Oaken, a Steve Okenism at yeah. um, the big show, which is what does it look like when you're working? Does it look mm -hmm. like a big mess or do you look professional? And you don't have to have the top grade uh, equipment to look professional. You just got to have a clean looking operation. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think that's all about image and I, I, the keys that, that you're hitting on that people, I think they breeze over it. You have to decide what market you're going after. Yeah. Is it just anybody in anything that needs to be washed, polished or shiny? Or are you going after a specific type of person? And the other thing I don't think people realize you are always marketing. Yes. When you're walking down the street, if you're wearing a shirt, you're marketing. If you are driving in your car, truck, or van, you are marketing. How does it look when you're working is a perfect example. If you have a, a fixed location, are there hoses and crap and soap and people all over everywhere? Or do you have it organized? Right. When you're mobile, do you have a cart that brings the stuff up so it looks very professional? You're always, always, always marketing. Yeah. Even down to, do you have... Uh uh spray bottles that are marked with a sharpie pen or are they pre-labeled from your from your favorite um uh, chemical supplier pre-labeled fully professional looking labels it's 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 all that stuff that adds to your level of professionalism and of course if you've got a, a shop <clears throat> you know a, a fixed location what does it look like on out front is it all messy and weedy and and uh, dirty or does it look nice and clean and again it doesn't have to be a, a huge project and with spending thousands of dollars to recondition the, the look of a, of a building. It just starts with basic cleanliness. And what does it look like if somebody comes in your lobby? Um, is it nice and clean and fresh? And I mean, all the corners and edges and everything, just like on the car. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've all been in a restroom at a business location and you go in the restroom and it's, it looks like it looks terrible. Well, just think about that in your own location. How do I, how does everything look? Mm -hmm. uh, 
So the image is really important. You know, going back to choosing the kinds of customers you want, um, I would say that in the beginning, you, uh, especially if you're sort of out there or shoe strapping it, um, or bootstrapping it, you, you, you've got to take everybody. And you're going to learn through taking everybody the kind of people you don't want. Like the yep. people who say, oh, how much do you charge for a car wash? Well, could you do it for less than that? Or can you give me a discount? And guess what? Those people are going to be the ones that come back with the white gloves on and their magnifying glasses to check your work. Um, so then you know not to do that in the future. Um, <clears throat> and then there's this concept of, um, I call it a transitioning from, from the middle 80%, because the middle 80% of income earners uh, from, you know, from low to, to high is going to be where the meat and potatoes are for your for your customers when you're getting most of your people but as you get to know those people you'll find that a few of them are really big boosters of you i call them boosters um kind mm -hmm. of like the football booster or the marching band booster team um, they're the ones that are just love you and tell their friends about you and are constantly trying to get you more business and from those people you get higher quality um higher quality referrals Mm -hmm. And, you know, then eventually you start getting some some pretty high quality referrals and you ask those people, hey, if you like my work, here's the best tip you can give me. Send me two, three more people uh, like you. And that's, you know, Mel Craig used to talk about just stand there with a piece of paper and say, can I get some phone numbers from you? You know, it's it's a great it's a great way to do it. Um, uh, and that's usually you're absolutely right. It's usually the people in that middle sector are the ones that give you the best reviews and the most and the most referrals. Well, that's your like starting the, point. And then you yeah. slowly transition into getting into like the upper 10 percent where they've got the money. They don't really care how much it costs. They just want high quality results. Right. Well, yeah. and I like the way you phrase that because you said the best business tip you can give me is by giving me more business. Yeah. Right. I think a lot of times, especially when you're a smaller operator, you're so consumed about today, right? I got to bring in the money. I got to build my business. And right. So right. you're looking at the dollar today instead of really building that relationship and saying, you know what? Thank you so much for coming and being a customer. If you really want to help me, can you refer me and my business to some of your inner circle? And the best marketing you can do is to do a really good job. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really is. Yes. Because your your performance is the best marketing you can do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Because most people will recognize that, they'll appreciate it, and they'll do their best to send you more business. The, I think the one thing people miss out on, though, is, and we saw this, we literally saw this firsthand the other day. You also, it's, it's okay to ask. And people, I think, are scared to say, hey, if you like my, you know, somebody comes in and gives you a really good compliment, man, this looks so great. This looks better than it was when I bought it. I really appreciate that. You know, the best thing you can do for me is could you please tell, you know, some of your friends about my work? Right. You need to ask for that because I think a yeah. lot of times people just expect, you know, they're going to love me and they're going to tell everybody, but, but it's okay to ask them to do that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. And, and another way that you can really market yourself is to have, <clears throat> um, a legitimate business. So when you're talking about your business, you can talk with confidence and the ways that you have a legitimate business, or I think we mentioned this before, you want to have your business license, you want to be fully insured and you want to be certified um, through the, through the IDA with your IDA certification. That way, when, um, when you're talking to new people and, you know, maybe your prices are a little bit more than your competition say, look, well, I'm licensed, insured and certified. Yep. So I take this very seriously. This is my career. Um, you know, in the old days when I had my business cards, it used to say uh, licensed, insured and certified. And and, uh, you know, now I don't even have to do that. You just put all these logos on it. And it looks great. But, yep. um, you know, these little things to make you uh, have more confidence and and set yourself, differentiate yourself from all the other uh, detail and competition out there. We'd love all detailers to be professional. But unfortunately, there's a good percentage of them that are not. And right. that's where we distinguish ourselves from those folks that are out so there you, just trying to make a quick buck. We're trying to make a career out of it. Yeah. yeah. And you bring up a good point, which is one of our next thing, which is your image, right? Business cards is one of them. Um, logos, uniforms. So let's talk about some of that stuff. You yeah. Know. You know, the funny thing about logos is I'll hold this up a little bit closer here so you can see it. This is my logo. It's beautiful. I love it. It's got the shape of the car, detail and progress. 
that that name came out of um, uh, was, uh, somebody said you should have a sign um, up next to you so people know when they're driving by what what you're doing. Oh, okay. So I wrote mm -hmm. detail in progress. I hand stenciled it, and I said, "Wait a minute, that would be a great name for a business." So um, that's cool. That's where that came from, um, you know, and it kind of is is it's detailing, but it's also progression. There's always moving forward kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but I, I got to tell you, I spent a lot of money on a logo. I can't say that it's really made that much difference in my business. I mean, you'd, you'd almost have to do a market survey about that but that's part of your branding i mean it's important um but if you're starting out and you're you got a small budget i wouldn't worry about the logo per se just yet just wait for a little bit um you can always get that later you don't have to have a logo to start a detail business no. that's really right. what i'm trying to say right so yeah i i think that where a logo becomes important is if you're trying to cement an idea in people's heads that is associated with your business, like bomb yes. detail, right? He has a little bomb walking with, you know, wash pads, right? So it's a perfect marriage into his name and his logo. And I think a lot of times people just throw a logo because they feel like they have a logo instead of going, right, this is my business name. This is my company brand and building on that because the right. logo could evolve after you've established your business. Sure. And a logo is important if you're if you're really trying to create that brand. And I understand that my my business wasn't so much about creating a brand. It was more about um, uh, cr creating a presence in the community. And so it's really more my face that that is, is my company. I'm really detail in progress. People don't don't really think about the name. They think about my name. Which some, you know, and some in marketing would say, well, that was a mistake, but I'm, I'm not really trying to create a detail and progress brand. It's more about really taking good care of the customers in my, in my community. So if you have a larger operation, yes, then these things like logos, branding, because you're going to have uh, employees coming and going, you don't want, really want them, want the people to, to associate the detail shop with a specific person. It's right. more about that's the detail right. shop that I go to because they provide the best service. So yes. it's a little bit different direction. We should distinguish between that. But there's yeah. a lot of people in this industry that that are, are um, one-off operations or very small operations. And in that case, the logo or the name is not as critical as the relationship with the operator and, and the, the, um, the understanding that you're going to get high quality service. <clears throat> Yep. Yep. So, so, so let's but, talk, you know, yeah. go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. But you know, uh, with the logo and then you got your uniform, I mean, a uniform can come down to just wearing something that looks nice and clean, right? Right. You don't right. want old ratty t-shirts. Um, you know, you could get some t-shirts printed up and just always have the same kind of t-shirt on. Uh, I also have, um, I don't have one next to me, but, but I have a pretty nice button down shirt. That's got all the IDA stuff on it and the, my, my logo and all that. And that's what I wear when I uh, show up at a customer's house or when they're bringing a car in. That's what I show up as. So they, that's during the during the intake mm. and also the presentation of the final product. But after that, I take it off. I got a T-shirt on underneath that I work in. Um, but you, you definitely want to have a clean look uh, no matter who's coming in, um, your uniform, your business cards. You want to have some uh, some uh, um, what's the word? Uh, cohesiveness with, with yeah. all that you know consistency your cohesive yeah. yes yeah for and that's, sure. i think that's 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 important no matter what your logo is no matter what your brand is whether you're yes. trying to brand yourself or you're trying to brand your business if you've got the ida logo on there and you've got your certifications and your insurance and everything whatever your logo is it needs to be consistent you know i yeah. mean that people need to be able to recognize that one of the biggest big days for jody and i was years and years and years ago we walked into a uh, one of these, uh, I think it was Mobile Tech Expo or something. We walked into something. Yeah, it was in Florida. Giant, great big facility. And we walked by and all of a sudden I heard somebody go, oh, hey, there's the Zenware Road FS guys. And I was like, did you hear those guys? And we're like, the logo works when somebody recognizes who you are. Because at that point we weren't doing podcasts. Mm -hmm. We were not, you know, we're not branding ourselves. We're branding the company. And so I think that's yeah. important. Um Especially like you were saying, if you're a mobile person, whatever you're driving needs to have some consistency and needs to look good. I was in better Cal be detailed. Yeah, I was in California <laughs> and I'm going to tell this story for the rest of my life. 
we pulled up in front of a, uh, it was a, a, a 3D location with Rennie and we were doing some stuff and people were coming <coughs> in DI water. They're, they're loading up their trucks with DI water and stuff. Oh, and so this, you can see all the different trucks. <laughs> yeah. This yep. guy rolled in and it was the rattiest looking piece of crap. Hoses wadded up in a ball thrown in the back. Junk hanging out everywhere. Literally paint peeling off the side of the truck. And he had his name on the side of the truck. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> nope. The yeah. only thing he could have done is he could have turned that around and said, you don't want your car to look like this, so call me. And turned it into a marketing right. thing because it was horrible. I'm like, there's no way I would ever call that guy. I don't care what the situation so, was. So guess what kind of customer that person's going to attract? He's going to attract people that don't want to pay a lot of money. Right. They don't really care about what your rig looks like because they know if you're driving a fancy rig, they're going to pay more. So yep. um, I'll tell you, the, the biggest thing, I, uh, we were driving back from Irvine yesterday, hour and a half trip. And I saw several um, logoed vehicles, wrapped vehicles. And the thing I noticed the most is that when you glanced at those vehicles, you couldn't really tell what they were doing. Yeah. It's like yes, yes, all yes, kinds right. of printing and, and a really cool, fancy logo, but you can't read it because you're going by too fast. So you don't yep. even know what they're doing. I have no idea what they're doing. So that would be one of the big recommendations is if you are mobile and you're going to put information on your vehicle, number one, the biggest thing should be detailing. All right. I don't care what your logo is or what the name of your business is. Tell me what you do and then put your freaking no phone number so I can read it. Okay? Right. Nice and big. <clears throat> nice That's and big. Little, bitty thing. Right. You can have a giant logo and the little tiny phone number underneath. It's not going to do you any good. Yeah. And yeah, don't have. You know what, what's interesting is sometimes. I, I'm I'm really interested in people that wrap their vehicles. And so Rod and I, you know, obviously with our software, we're serving detailers. And I literally have my phone ready when I'm driving down the car. And I will take a photo. Yes, I'm driving. I will take a photo of somebody's car because I will never remember. I will remember their name usually, but I will never remember their phone number. Right. Right. So you know, making your name and your phone number prominent and to your point, detailing prominent so that I know what you do. I'm not guessing. I'm right. not seeing a bullet point list on the back of your doors <clears throat> going, ah, does is that a fit? Nah, it's too busy. I'm going to ignore it. Right. So no. smaller is better. The other thing, I mean, a smaller number of details on a vehicle, right? Yeah, if you do 15 sure. different services, don't put them all in the vehicle. And mine, and this is just me. This is not scientific. This is absolutely just me as a consumer or slash somebody that's involved in this. Don't choose some fancy font that I can't read. Yes. Make <laughs> it really simple. I know that the simple fonts don't look pretty, but look at you. You have to be able to read it from a distance and, right. and see what you're talking about. I've seen so many people that have these really awesome logo. For instance, if you look at our screen right now, in this lower corner over here, this IDA logo. Love the IDA, but you can't read the word Founders Club. And the word in, and underneath IDA where it says International Detailing Association, you cannot read that. You can't read it. It's too small. So, you know? yeah. And so the point is the phone number and what you're doing. If you're detailing, just say detailing and phone number. The rest of it, you can do whatever you want. You can yeah. put as much on there as you want, but make sure those two things are really big on your car. Then I understand that some people like to have the bullet list sure. um, and, the, and the different logos of their memberships and stuff like that. But that's if you're stopped at a stoplight and somebody's going to be sitting there reading all that. But for the passing by, which is what most people are doing, you know, it's it's it, you've got to have that phone number big enough so they can call you. And then <laughs> here's one of my pet peeves. If you have your phone number blasted all over your car, don't drive like an a-hole. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. I will tell you the, the advice that I give our employees, okay? And, and this is if you have employees, if you don't, it doesn't matter. This is you. I've told them for, for years we had some really young kids working for us. And I would say, hey, it's Friday. Go out and have a great weekend. And if you're going to be an ass, put on somebody else's shirt. Yeah. Do not go out with a logo from your business and be a jerk. And yeah. we're going to get into more of that later on, but you're <laughs> always time, marketing no matter what you're doing. Yeah. One time I was at a, a supermarket at lunchtime and I was in this line and there was a line over here and a line over here, you know, the checkout lines. And one guy in a logo shirt is talking to the other guy in a logo shirt. They walk, they're 
talk, they're from the same company. And the F bombs and the is and the hat blah, 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 across the aisle, you know, with with moms and kids and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, that's it. That's that's what your company is all about. Okay, very good. And I can see that your employees really care about the public too. So you yeah, gotta be yeah. careful with that stuff, especially if you have employees. Make sure they understand when you got my shirt on, you be respectful to everybody and friendly to everybody because you never know where that next customer is going to come yes. from. Yes. One yes. of the worst experiences I ever had mobile detailing is um, I had received permission from a real estate agent to detail his car in the real estate uh, uh, company's parking lot. You know, they had some, who knows, 20 agents in there or whatever. And so I'm setting up and I've got, I'm all set up in the corner. And this woman comes out and she says, you know, I think we've had this conversation before. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't think I've ever spoken to you in my life. So, well, you can't do this here. And I said, well, I have permission from, from Mr. Winkler inside. So, no, you don't have permission. You can't be here. And I was so embarrassed and so upset that I packed up and I called him and I said, whoever that woman is, she said, I can't do it there. And he was so apologetic. He said, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's so and so. Well, she's a real prominent real estate agent. Guess what, lady? I am never buying a house from you. I'm never calling oh, yeah. you. You're, you didn't even treat me with respect. You just thought I was some idiot detailer um, uh, that you'd spoken to before. And I'm not. I never met her in my life. Yep. So you got to be careful how you talk to people, especially if they're strangers. Um, yeah. You know, you're and standing I, in line at the bank. I mean, if you've got a logo shirt, turn around and talk to the guy behind you. How's it going? How's your day going? You know, hand him yep. a business card. Yep. And I think that's important. So it's a couple of, a couple of takeaways here. Um, uniform, whether it's a consistent color of t-shirt or anything else, you know, like you said, it doesn't, when you're first starting out, you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of embroidered mm -hmm. shirts, right? But just a consistent thing that you're wearing, right? Yeah. Um, business cards as uh, they're old school, but they still make a difference. I know a it. lot of detailers that when they're done with the card, they set a business card inside Yeah, they still and, need it. And, and leave two because they want to keep one and they want them to give one to somebody else. They're still used. People still take a picture of them and stuff. Um, brochures in your, and your website are another thing we talk about brochures. That's a question mark, whether or not that's good for the marketing that you're trying to do website. Yeah. Um, one of the things I do with marketing is I always tell people, ask people where they heard about you. You yes. don't know what's effective unless you ask, Hey, where did you hear about me? Mm -hmm. And if people are like, Oh, I, I looked on the web. You know, oh, I saw you on, you know, Yelp. I saw you on uh, 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 Nextdoor. I saw mm -hmm. find out where people are finding out about you. Yeah. You know, oh, I went to this. I'm in this business complex and I saw one of your business cards. You know, somebody posted on the bulletin board. Figure out how people find out about you and then do that thing. Right. You know, whatever Absolutely. that is. Right. Yeah. Um, so um, going back to, uh, you know, um, I just lost the thought. <laughs> Uh, it's easy to do. That was a lot. You get you you just spewed out a lot there, Rod. I, I can do that. I've been known to spew yeah. a lot. Um, you know how you attract customers in the beginning. Um, now it's just gets completely gone. That, yeah. That's okay. It's 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 all good. We'll get there. I think I think one of the things too is years ago oh, I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I mean, a website, um, a website is great if you expect a lot of people to be checking you out and they want more information. Brochures, mm -hmm. that's the one. That's the one I really want to hit on. Okay. okay. Um, I have never had a pre-printed brochure. Um, and I've got a very successful detail business. That doesn't mean it's not for you. I understand that. If you're going to be in situations where you need to pass out information to a lot of people, a brochure can be great. I will tell you right now, do not put prices in your brochure because yes. you need to be able to change that at a moment's notice mm -hmm. if things change. Mm -hmm. Your business should be bobbing and weaving with the times, all right? Um, and if you've got all your prices printed and somebody comes in and says, hey, I want to get your uh, your such and such package for $125. And so, oh, I'm sorry, that's $150 now. Well, you're stuck. you got to give it to them for $125 because they're standing there mm -hmm. with a piece of paper that says it's $125. Right. So, and, and also on your website, um, you know, I, I don't like putting prices on the website mm -hmm. unless you're actually doing scheduling and appointments through the website. Then you got to have the price. They got to know right. how much it's going to cost. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe even prepay for it in that sense. I get it. But if you're just trying to get people to call you and to come into your shop, 
um, then don't don't put the prices because they're just going to shop for prices. They're going to see years and say, oh, that's too expensive. I'll go find yep. one that's less yep. expensive. Yep. Um, brochures, uh, you, you know, the and this is all connected to the menu thing, and we'll get into that next time. But I'm, I'm a big proponent of a simple menu. Um, you know, these people that have 15, 16, 17 different packages. I was just at a location in, in Alabama where they had four different interior packages. And it's like the people up front trying to sell it have to go through this whole rigmarole yeah. with the customer about right. uh, the condition of the inside of the car and try to figure it out. And then I asked each one of the employees, 10 employees, what's your which which uh, menu item do you hate doing? And it was all the interior stuff, the, the uh, uh, simple interior, the smaller interior packages. They hated doing it because whatever was sold never fit the vehicle. So yeah. Uh, so you you've got to and i said i told the owners i said look why don't you just have one interior package this is the way we do every car you can always discount it if the car's in great yeah. condition or if they come in once a month you can discount it but it's just we're going to follow the same process every time regardless of the car and the condition of the car so and that goes to your brochure then because your brochure doesn't have to have 14 packages on it it should yeah. really only have two or three and then maybe mm -hmm. a list of custom atoms. And we'll talk about that later. So right. this whole brochure thing, you know, what I used as a brochure was a Microsoft Word one page. And that was mostly for me. So I knew how to sell my stuff. It was very simple. And then because it's on Microsoft Word, I can change it anytime I want. I can print out as many or as few as I want. And, you yeah. know, if I'm going to a business meeting and I want to just pass that out to people with my card staple to it, great, I'll pass it out to them. But if I decide to change that in two months, I can change it because it's on Microsoft Word. If I've got 10,000 brochures, guess what? I can't change much. Right. Well, and here's here's the thing that I think about with brochures. Um, I think brochures are ideal. I think a lot of times we think we need a brochure, but really what people need is something small that resonates with your business to their heart and their mind, right? right? And so a business card, as much as it is old school, people take a business card, they put it in their wallet. What happens to a brochure? It ends up nine times out of 10 in the round file, yeah. right? And, you know, I think of other service companies that have come into my house. I have one business on my refrigerator, and it is for an appliance repair shop. And he gave me a magnetic business card, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I don't have to look for that card. Right. And, and the other one that I have is my plumber, right? So when you think about your marketing materials, think about what's going to stay both physically and in the mind of the customer. And right. then that will stay consistently through your brand and your business. Yes. Yep. Yes. And there is a backside of a business card. I'm not sure if everybody knows that or not, but you can put your bullet point things you do, you know, ceramic coating, yep. interior detail, exterior detail. You can put those things on the back of the business card with no prices. I would 100 percent back right. that up. Don't yeah, the back could be the back could be as simple as uh, uh, interior detailing, exterior detailing, polishing, ceramic coatings, uh, yep. engine cleaning, you know, overspray removal, whatever you want. Just a simple bullet list. Um, yeah. Yep. And, and, and call right. today yep. to schedule Big your appointment, number. right? Yep. Call to action. And, and 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 that's the same thing I think with a website. I agree with you. A lot of people are wanting to throw all these prices on there, and every time they change something, they got to change their website. And so yeah. make sure that your website is clean, it's crisp, it is detail oriented, shouldn't look like crap, just like everything else. And that you can have access to change it. I'm going to just throw in a little technological note here. Whoever you're having do your website, if it's not you and you're going to somebody else, you need to make sure of two things for sure. One, you have the administrative password so that if there's a situation yes. where somebody has to get in there, you can give it to somebody to make a change. And number two is, this is probably the most important, make sure you own your domain name. There are a lot of website companies out there that'll be like, hey, website's 50 bucks a month. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then they will own detailandprogress.com. And yeah. if you wanted to have somebody else do it, they'd be like, that's fine, but I own Detail and Progress. Pay up. And you don't own your own domain. That is absolutely detrimental. I know it doesn't sound like it. Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't really care. You do care. It's you your business care. name. You need yeah. to own it. So yeah. make sure of those two things. They're, it's not that they are 
shysters. It's that's why the website is so cheap because they own everything and they're trying to keep you coming back to them. Right. So make sure it's simple. Make sure it's got your stuff on there, but don't make it so complicated that people can't figure it out. I know there's, <laughs> we're looking at one right now for a guy and he's following, it's an industry uh, product company. I'm not going to mention their name, but they have a very, very complex way of choosing these four. Uh, if you choose this option and then this option and then this option and then this option, you'll get a price. And I'm involved in this stuff. And I, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go down and pick 57 different things. And how do you know the price is going to stay when I pick those five items out, you know? So give people a range and that way you're not disappointing them with your, you know, our interior details go from 69.95 up to 11.95. Well, there it's going to be somewhere in the middle, <laughs> right? It's wow. always going to be somewhere in the middle. That's quite the estimate. It is. It's an estimate. Yeah. You don't want to be so that you're like, okay, it's either $69 or it's 5,000. So I got two prices. That's it. You've got to make sure that people understand, Hey, they got to bring the car in. You can't do it. You can't do an estimate over the phone. Nobody can. And well, B, you can give them a starting price. Yes, yes, yes. That's, yes, that's the absolutely. Point. Give them the you can ask them a couple of questions. So if somebody yep. calls and says, I, I need an interior detail, yep. I'm going to ask them a few things like, what's the year making model of the vehicle? Do you have any pets? Uh, do you have kids? Uh, when's the last time the car was detailed? Um, is there a specific reason why you're calling me for a detail today, uh, especially with interiors? Because a lot of times it's because somebody threw up or the dog did this or something spilled. And they're just trying to get an interior detail price, not realizing that that special situation costs extra. Yeah, right. So you got to right. ask so, questions. Uh, any special stains that need to be removal? You know, you need to know the, the size of the vehicle, and then you can come back and say, well, you know, based on everything that you told me, sight unseen, I'm going to say that your interior detail starts at this price. Yeah, now, exactly. When when you show up or when I show up at your place and I take a look at the vehicle, that could change. Uh, depending on the condition of the vehicle. But based on what you told me, it's going to start at this price. And love, that is the I exact conversation. And that's that's what your website needs to convey and all your marketing materials. My starting price is one twenty five for an interior detail. We do special projects, you know, depending on if you're... It's not an advised price. price, by the way. Yeah, no, that this please no... Say, say that again. That is not I an advised price. I think that's important. Go ahead right. and say that again. That's not an advised price, by the way. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Because I, I think mean that that, of... that uh, may or may not fit you and your situation. Right. Um, um, I can tell you that at a hundred dollars an hour, that gives me an hour and a, and a quarter to do that interior details. Probably yep. not, not not enough time. Right, right. You know, in, you know when we discuss price, we I, I always go to because of antitrust law, uh, we can't really discuss prices too much. But I always go to the per hour rate. I like to average about a hundred bucks an hour. So if, a, if a, one of my packages takes me four hours, guess what the price of the package should be? It should be about uh, 400. Right. Yeah. No, right. So not. have a starting point. And, and if you are just starting out, it's different than if you've been in business for 10 years or of something. Of course. If you've been in business for 10 years, take a look at the numbers. Look at the how, what you actually sell the most. And that gets back to your, your, uh, your item list or your packages or your pricing. If you haven't sold item 15 but twice in the last 15 years, don't offer it. Get rid of that. That's just a waste of your time. Just right. sell what you sell and narrow that down to a few key things. It's kind of like there was a study done on ice cream parlors um, and they had a 31 flavors and they had a fake ice cream shop next to it that had three flavors, strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. And they asked people coming out of both of them, there's level of satisfaction and people overwhelmingly like 90% were more satisfied with strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. Yeah. And they said, because I know what I'm getting. And in the 31 flavors, they're always like, well, I always wondered if I should have got the other package. Yeah. Exactly. So don't. Another, yeah. Yeah. Keep it simple. Just keep it simple. And we can go into this when we get into the menu. Yes, thing we will go into that. So for sure. many, uh, so many different angles that come back to simplifying and, and, and there's experts out there that talk about that. Um, so uh, I don't know if you guys want to, to break into a second session. I think we should talk about the different ways that yep. you can track customers to your business. And that could yep. be a whole discussion by itself. Yeah, I yep. think I think we should save that for episode two. So we want to thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Guys, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Yep. Hit that subscribe button, and we will check you same time, same bad channel, just next episode. Yep. See ya. <laughs>